is good. Go ahead, go ahead. It is good for us to be here. We can't hear him through the video. We can't. It is good. Got a yellow one right there. Another mic. Come on, no. Stay right there. 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 Stay right Praise God out there in Facebook land. Yeah. I hope and pray that we can concur with what the psalmist song in Psalm number 18 and verse number 2. There are eight miles in that verse. Don't miss those miles. The Bible says in Psalm 18 and verse number 2, the Lord is my rock yeah. and my fortress. And my deliverer, my God, my strength, praise God, my buckler, my salvation, my high tower. And what he is, or what he was, by to the strongest, is what he can be to us. And he is to us, those of us who belong to Christ Jesus the Lord. And so we thank God for that. My name is Brother Richard Washington, and I'm here to welcome you. Uh, thank God for you and you tuning in to our worship services here at Missouri City Church of Christ. Our order of service will be as follows. Our opening prayer will be made by Brother Smith. Our song service will be uttered by Brother Mara. Our communion will be uttered by Brother Matthews. Offering by Brother Rainey. A sermon will be by Brother Moss, a visiting evangelist. Our invitation will be done by our elder, Brother Scott. And then closing remarks will be done by our minister, Brother George Michael Williams. We thank you, we welcome you, and we just pray that whatever God has for you, you, you will be open to him. Thank you. Good morning. morning. Let's all go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Just thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you in spirit and the truth once again. Father, we ask that you forgive us all of any sins that we have committed as we go through this service today. That we all open up our hearts and our minds and souls and give it all to you right now at this point. And give us the strength and the wisdom to carry it out through this week and pass it on to others during these trying times. Father, we ask that you stick with this congregation. Continue to strengthen us all here for this community, for ourselves, that we continue to be one to make things better as you see it fit. All this blessed we ask in your darling son Jesus. Amen. How we doing this morning? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. You got up this morning. Yeah. You got some clothes on. Yeah. You was in your right mind, so you picked the right colors. Yeah. So don't you come in here and be quiet this morning, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's been good. And you know what? I saw some people sitting on their porches over here. Yeah. So what would you look like talking about? We the church, and they don't hear you singing over there. That must be preaching, boy. Y'all sure. Uh, <laughs> God be the Amen. Come on, sing, y'all. Amen. Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. Come on, hey. Sing it again. Say amen. Come on and say it, y'all. Come on and say it, y'all. Amen. Amen. Sing it over. Your hands together, say it. Put your hands together and say it. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Sing it over. Amen. Amen. Sing it over. Amen. Come on, church, and sing it with me. Amen. Come on, church, and sing it with me. Amen. 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 Jesus loves. 
loves you, hey. Jesus loves you, hey. Jesus loves you, hey. Come on and say it. Come on and say it. Come on and say it. Of God the Father, hey. He's my Father, said, hey. He's my Father, said, hey. Amen. Uh, praise his name and say hey. uh, Come on and praise his name and say hey. Come on and praise his name and say it hey. Amen Amen Come on Come on and praise his name and say it hey. Come on and praise his name and say it hey. Put your hands together for the God who made you. Come on, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein, He founded it. He founded it. And we ought to give Him some love this morning. We did it at the T ball game yesterday. You owe Him some praise. Come on, put your hands together. I'm not going to stop until you put your hands together. You're not going to lack luster in this God that we serve. He is the audience this morning. And we're going to give it to Him. We're not. We're not going to not reach heaven this morning. Otherwise, we've just had a little meeting and we yeah. get to go home. Yeah. Not over here today. Yeah. We're going to praise our God and I need your help. Yeah. And they said they needed a song leader and that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to praise amen. God. Everybody say amen. amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We ain't afraid to say it over here either. Because we serve that same God. Somebody got to get excited about it. We ain't here with a little bit. Then you get to go home and watch whatever show you want. Yeah. Right now, give him some praise. Yeah. Would you do that with me? Yeah. Put your hands together for him one more time. Right. One more time. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. If he's done anything for you, you can sing this song. Say, God has Are there any holy hands in here? Has it been good? Sing it. Sing it, y'all. God, I have hey, a smile. Sing, church. A sinner, he has set me free. Come on, sing it with me, y'all. Say, God. Amazing grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, hey, but now I'm found. I, I was blind, but now, right now, I'm Say, say, God has, has smiled on thee. Say that He has set me free. Come on, church, sing it. Say, God has, He has smiled on me. Say He's been good to me. Time say God. Come on, sing it with me. Say it. If it's been good, say it. Come on and sing it with me. Say God has smiled on me. Said he's been good. Say it again, say it, y'all. Say he's been good. 
Give mighty God say he's been You still here today say he's been Oh, say it again say he's been You're here today because he's been Ain't it been mighty good y'all He's been Go on and say it loud He's been Has he been good cause he's listening He's been Say it again You're not going to get away with it this morning. No, you don't get to just sit here today. You've got to give God some praise. Since you came out here, walked through this grass, got your shoes wet or whatever, you need to give him some praise today. Not going to be shy about him today. Hallelujah. Come on and sing a hallelujah. Come on and sing it when the hallelujah. Come on and sing it, y'all hallelujah. Sing it, say a hallelujah. Come on and sing a hallelujah. Come on and sing it, hallelujah. Come on and sing it, just say hallelujah. Come on and sing it, just say hallelujah. Come on, say it, y'all, say it, hallelujah. It's the highest form of praise. I said a hallelujah. Come on and sing it, y'all, hallelujah. Well, I've been running ever since I made star. Oh, my days are. Come on, y'all, set up and make mine. Sing it with me, y'all. Say, love is above and it over in my heart, in my heart. Come on, and sing it. Say, say, honey. Come on and sing it, y'all say ha. Put your hands together and say it ha. Come on and sing it, say it loud, say ha. Cause my God is listening, you say ha. Say it again, say it, say it. One more time, say it, say it, say it. Come on and say it again, say ha. <laughs> in my heart, and in my heart. Come on, hallelujah, say, say hallelujah. Come on and sing it with me, say hallelujah. Well, I've been running ever since I made a star. Put your hands together with me, come on, y'all. Money. Since I've made this, I got baptized in the Lord. 
only go so far, I come get you. You owe him some praise today. All these people dying of this, man, this pandemic, this plague that's come across this land. People dying every day. 200,000 of them, and you ain't one of them. And then you're going to come in here and lackluster of God. I'm not giving up on you today. I know you came in here, you was arguing all the way over here. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I got a wife. Arguing all the way over here. Something was happening all the way over here. The chicken is at home, but leave it there because your body's here with me. You can't have your mind on your roast over there. I promise God is waiting on you to hear from you. He, he saved you. Not only that, he spared you today. No, ain't that worth it? Ain't that worth giving him a hand about? He spared you today. Woo! Man. Just because you might have a funeral Tuesday. <laughs> if my robe is white, a way they call me. Oh, when my robe is white, I will hear. Uh, if my robe is white, a way they call me. I'll be somewhere. Uh, listening for my name. Come on, sing it, y'all. Well, I'll be somewhere. Uh, listening, I'll be somewhere. Uh, listening, I'll be somewhere. Uh, listening for my name. Said I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Uh, listening for my name. Said if my robe is white or white. Listening for my name. Sing it with me. Said I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening for my. Come on, sing, y'all. Come on, listening, I'll be somewhere. Listening for my name. Come on, put your hands together one more time. You ain't got that many songs. I'm, we're about to do communion right now, see? Yeah. See, I done gave you a break. Because I usually do like five or six. But you know what? If you keep coming over here every Sunday 52 times and you don't reach heaven, you might as well be down at the 501 club down there, whatever they have it with something else going on because it's just an event. If you don't reach heaven, it's an event if you don't worship God. It's an event if you just come in here looking. Y'all hear me? Raise your hands if you heard it. Because God gonna hold you responsible for it now. <laughs> Is that all right? It's time for our communion. Hey, I, was, I had about 10 communion songs that I was thinking about. Y'all gonna have to excuse me one. Because I had one in particular that I wanted to do. I got it. Oh, what wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me well I'm the one who did, who did atone just to show his matchless bread Jesus son
up on the first day of the way when the disciples came together to break bread. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his yeah. speech until midnight. Yeah. Also, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter start to third verse read, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you. But the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he has given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's pray for the bread. Mm. Dear Heavenly Father, we come at this time approaching your throne, O oh Father, asking you to bless this bread and represent your son's body. We pray, Father, as ones who would take the bread would take the clean hands and the pure heart. Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This two years after you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat and drank unworthily, eat and drank damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's pray for the cup. The Heavenly Father, we come once again, O oh Father, just want to say thank you, O oh Father. Oh, Father, we ask you to bless this cup and represent your son's blood. Oh, Father, we pray, oh, Father, the ones who would take this cup and take it with a hand. And reflect back to the cross where Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, you may take the Lord's Supper. church at this time as we approach our offering service we want to give God thanks and praise for continuing to bless us we will recite Luke chapter 16 verse 10 to 13 reading from the NIV version the Bible reads whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much Whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling holy wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Yeah. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give who will give you a property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let us pray for the offering at this time. Holy and righteous God, yes, you are. Father that dwelleth in the heavens, Lord, we come giving you thanks and praise for this another Lord's day. Father, we thank you for Jesus and for his sacrifice on Calvary's cross. We thank you, Father, for blessing us that we, Father, can be Christians of God. We can, you can bless us, Father, with the privilege to, to know you, O God, and to have the hope of life eternal one day. Father, we thank you, God, for our jobs and for good health and strength, for our families, our homes, for all that we have. 
that were given to us by you, O God. So, Father, we pray, God, for what we have to offer back to you, O God. Bless, bless it, Father, God, and bless us. Be with us, Father, and continue to use us in your son's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to make known that there are three ways to giving. First, which is the preferred way we have the link is on our website. Then we have uh, texting. You can text the money amount to 281 7 6 7 8 6 1 1 and follow the instructions. And then thirdly, there's, there's mail. You can mail your offering to Missouri City Church of Christ, P.O. Box 924, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you, and may God continue to bless us. Bless the wonderful name, come on y'all, of Jesus. Come on and just bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on and just bless that wonderful name, come on of Jesus. Where there ain't no other name I know. Come on and bless that wonderful name, come on of Jesus. Come on now, come on now, 
He's been good to you. Give him some praise today. I know you're six feet apart, but man, that's more reason to make some noise for the God who saved you. Yeah. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. We will rejoice yeah. and be glad in it. Has God been good to you on this morning? Yeah. Has God been good to you on this morning? Yeah. If the Lord's been good to you, somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for one more day. Thank you, Lord, for putting me in my right mind. Thank you, Lord, for putting a roof over my head last night. Thank you, Lord, for putting clothes on my back. Thank you, Lord, for putting a beat in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for putting oxygen in my lungs. Thank you, Lord, for putting a walk in my step. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done this morning. If the Lord has been good to you, somebody ought to say thank you. Thank you. God is a great God, and he's worthy of the praise. Amen. The Bible says that if we don't praise him, God will cause the rocks to cry out. I'm so glad that God has given us a voice to be able to praise his wonderful, mighty, and matchless name this morning. And because God has given us a voice, and because God has been good, we ought to praise his name this morning. Amen. I, I, I praise God for this weather that he's given us. Amen. He's a mighty, awesome God. And you know, we had to get on a Zoom call yesterday and make plans uh, because it was in the forecast that right now it's supposed to be pouring down rain. But ain't God good? God has held the rain off. Just so we can worship him right now. And not only has he held the rain off, but he cooled it down for yes, us. Yes. Amen. And, and I bet you, I bet you that once we finish, the rain will come down. <laughs> God will hold it off just long enough so we can worship and praise his name this morning. We serve a mighty good God for all month long. We've had awesome weather, and, and that's just an attest to the God that we serve. God has done this for us so that we can worship him this morning. And so uh, we are under a tropical storm warning, but through it all, God has given us this chance uh, to be able to worship him. I'm excited this morning. We appreciate Brother Mara for doing an awesome job leading us in our song service this morning. Uh, man, we, I just appreciate his spirit. I appreciate the intensity uh, that he has. I appreciate his joy and love and fervor for the Lord. And so we just thank God for using him this morning. Amen. Then we're in for a treat. Yeah. Uh, we have a great man of God from the Fort Worth area, Lake Como Church of Christ, right. in the person of Brother Brian Moss. Uh, Brother Moss is one of my great friends. We attended uh, Southwestern Christian College together, and there I got to know him and uh, got to develop a great friendship with Brother Moss, and I just love him and love his spirit, love the way he delivers the Word of God. Brother Moss is well educated. Uh, he received a B.S., in economics from East Carolina University, uh, BS in religious studies from Southwestern Christian College, master's degree in theological studies from Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary. Uh, Brother Moss is doing great works there at Lake Como Church of Christ. Uh, he's been there at their congregation for the past nine years, uh, been married to his wife for the past 15 years, and God has blessed them with two boys. And uh, we're just so glad to have him here with us this morning here in Missouri City. Uh, we know he's going to bless us with the word from the Lord. Uh, just told him, just preach the word. Uh, whatever he has on his heart to revive us uh, during this time of pandemic, during this time of racial tension, uh, during this time of presidential elections, uh, we know that people are going through crisis uh, in their lives right now. And so we've asked them just to give us a word that will encourage us uh, during these times. And so we know that there is a word from the Lord. So we'll have another song by Brother Jeff Morale. 
And after that song, the next voice you will hear will be that of Brother Brian Moss, minister to the Lake Como Church of Christ in Fort Worth, Texas. Think about these words as you sing them. Think about these words as you sing them. Well, I love to praise him. Come on, sing it. I love to praise him. Come on, y'all. I love to praise him. I want you to think about these words. Say that I love to praise him. Here's your statement. Do you believe it? We're going to say hallelujah because it's true. Everybody, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. I love to praise him. Everybody, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. I love to praise him. Everybody, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing. I love to praise him. Well, I love to. Come on, here. Come on, sing, church. That I have hit and said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Come on, I love to praise Him. Everybody, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Come on, I love to praise Him. Everybody, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Come on, I love to praise Him. Well, I love to, I love to praise Him. Oh, sing. Say that he's my rock. 
Come on, my rock, come on, rock. Said that he's a wheel. Say it. I know you ain't never done nothing to go. Said he's just a Jew, yeah. Come on, y'all. It's your chance to praise him. Come on, say it. you love to praise him. If you love to praise him, then don't act like you have, you do this every Sunday. This In the middle of a pandemic, you ought to clap your hands. In the middle of a pandemic, you ought to stomp your feet. In the middle of a pandemic, you ought to wave your hands because after all, we've come this far because of the God that we serve. Yeah. Listen, family, uh, I got a couple things I need to say. Um, before I start preaching, yeah. uh, number one, we want to give glory and honor to the God that we serve. Yeah. Because it's only through and by him that we move, live, and have our very being. Yes, and I wouldn't begin to say thank you to anybody without first saying <laughs> thank you to the God that we serve. Uh, then I want to say uh, to my classmate and friend, how you get all the preach out of the room in your introduction of the person who's supposed to be preaching? I was like, he just gonna preach. Ain't gonna be no air in the room when I get up there to preach. It is. Uh, but you all have a phenomenal preacher in Brother Williams. Amen. Let's celebrate God for him. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something. You ought to, you ought to know. And I'm not just saying this because he invited me, because um, I don't say this everywhere I go, and I know Amen. folks. Uh, who follow me are going to be watching and if you ask any of them they'll tell you I don't call everybody a preacher um, because some people uh, that stand in the pulpit um, are not preachers or they might be preachers but they ain't God's preachers uh, and not everybody who preaches can preach y'all get that in a minute um, but y'all got a preacher who can preach who is God's preacher amen and you ought to be thankful for that um, because that combination is few and far between them. But above all that, you got a good man. I said you got a good man. And, and you ought to be grateful um, because uh, I'm going to be honest. Can I be honest with you? I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm a little older than your preacher. Not by much. Um, but I'm, I'm pushing 40. And uh, I know some of y'all are a little older than 40. Some of you are a little younger than 40. But something, um, for those of you who are on your way to 40, you'll be able to help me, won't you? Um, some things in your life begin to change. Uh, 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 as you get closer to 40. And your mind begins to uh, change the closer you get to 40. And what used to be important to you ain't important no more. Uh, your priorities shift. And chasing this uh, at 40 ain't what it used to be. Amen, somebody? Um, and so your perspective changes. Your world view changes. And you begin now um, to appreciate what is real. Um, what is authentic and you appreciate things that are timeless and things that matter um, and what I said all that to say um, finding a good man 
who is also a good preacher, yeah. who is also a good minister, yeah. who loves the Lord yeah. and his family. Y'all yeah. to leave him alone yeah. and lift him up. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Not that anybody's bothering him. I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know what y'all, how y'all treat my friend, but I want to encourage you to treat him right. Treat him right. Uh, because the, the more, the higher he goes, the higher the church goes. The farther he goes, the farther Missouri City goes. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, and so I, I, I'll give two more observations before I ask you to open your Bible. Uh, it is a blessing. Uh, to see the man of God positioned to do his job. Yeah. Why? Because there's so many others around him working uh, in the vineyard of the Lord to produce what the church needs to produce in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. And and I say to him, just like I've encouraged you, I want to encourage him, be grateful yeah. to have a group of men and women who, watch this, will come out for church outside. Yeah. With a forecast yeah. like the one you got today. Amen. Because because I, I kept looking at the forecast. I said, I done drove all the way down here. I ain't going out there preaching that weather. Amen. Uh, my faith has been uh, increased this morning. Uh, because it, it, in some cities, if it looked like it might rain. Yeah. Mm. Well, let me give you my final observation, right. and we'll read the scripture. I have never in my whole life had the privilege of sitting in a live concert of Brother Jeff Mariah. Amen. Hey. Brother, it has been a privilege this morning. You are one gifted, amazingly talented uh, servant of the Lord. You can. I, I watch you all the time on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you didn't know I was a fan, but I, I do. You've done a couple concerts in the pandemic that I've watched. And uh, you two, I'm sitting there in my living room watching this man sing that. Man, that's, that's incredible. And then you, I show up and you at church? Amen. I said, bless the Lord. I just want to encourage you to keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Uh, keep doing what you're doing and continue to do it for the Lord. Uh, do me a favor, family. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 22. I'm going to preach for the next 26 minutes. Um, he told me, y'all get out of church around 1130 or so? Not today. Amen. Um, amen. I got about 26 minutes. Uh, and uh, the, the, the message will be yours. I do bring you greetings from the Lake Como Church of Christ in Fort Worth, Texas, where I've had the privilege of serving. Uh, there and uh, we have been graced by God um, to work together to make an impact on our community and on our city and at the end of the day what I believe is that that's all that really matters uh, that, that you don't have to have a mega church to have a mega ministry but if you can make a difference in the lives of the people who, who you serve, in the lives of the community that you serve, then that's where God really gets the glory. God does, does not necessarily get the glory by the biggest church. But God, because you, you've seen in scripture when people try to build something big, that it ain't about God. And don't get me wrong, every person is a number and every number has a soul. So we got to be in the business of building the kingdom, but don't think just because it is big that it is the best. Somebody ought to say amen. Uh, but if you can do what you do for the glory of God, then God will get what he wants and you'll get what you need. Somebody ought to say amen. Now, I'm not used to preaching outside. Not, my Bible won't be still. Amen. Yeah. So y'all pray for me as you meet me at Genesis chapter 22. Yeah, all right. uh, Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 9. And I'm going to tell you one more thing. I haven't preached in front of a group of people for six months. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I ain't had nobody looking back at me for six months, brother. So uh, this is strange. Amen. <laughs> Genesis chapter 22. And we're going to begin reading at verse number nine. And I hope the Holy Spirit will let me preach it like I want to. All right. Because uh, preaching outside, uh, there are there is another element called allergies. Yes, sir. And so, uh, 
y'all pray with me. <laughs> the Bible says in Genesis 22, beginning at verse number nine. Then they came to the place which God had told him. Y'all know this story. Yeah. And Abraham built the altar and there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, took the knife, hear me, to slay his son. Yeah. Yeah. Your preacher told you I have two sons. I don't know if I'm willing to sacrifice either one of them. That's right. That's right. But don't miss your shout now. All right. Abraham, let me try one more time. I need y'all to help me because we outside. All right. Abraham took out his hand, stretched his hand, took out the knife to slay his son. But y'all gonna make me read it one more time. Look here now. He stretched out. This was, this was not the son that he put out the house. This wasn't Hagar's son born out of the will of God. This was the son that God had promised him. And now that God had given him what he promised, then God turned around and asked for it back. But, <laughs> well, hopefully y'all help me in a minute. The angel of the Lord called him all the way from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. The Lord said, do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing to him. For I know, watch this. My version says, for now I know. <laughs> For now I know yeah. that you fear God. Yeah. And since you have not withheld your son, yeah. Yeah. your only son from me, then uh, Abraham raised his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the bush. Yeah. Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his sons. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. I, I feel my, the Holy Ghost in this place. He said that the Lord will provide. One more time for the Holy Spirit. And he said after all that he has seen that the Lord will provide. <laughs> That's enough right there. I'm going to preach from that subject. God will provide. If you believe that, why don't you just repeat after me? God will provide. Now, we have a church outside for a reason. I'm sure y'all got all the city ordinances taken care of so that they, the neighborhood knew you were coming. Don't act like you got to whisper. Somebody shout it like you mean it. God will provide. Yes, sir. Let's pray together. Good God Almighty, we come with our heads bowed and our hearts humble. Lord, to tell you thank you. Because we are indeed still with 200,000 deaths and counting, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. And yet, for six months, if we did not know before, we know now that you will provide. Like Abraham said some four and a half thousand years ago, I will call you Jehovah Jireh because you are my God and you will provide. Now may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight that all of God's children who agree say amen and amen God will provide right now <laughs> this moment the world in its entirety is dealing with uncertainty our collective situation quite possibly for the first time in history where there is complete 
equity and equality. Because all of our situations are unstable, unpredictable, and indefinite. Hear me, church. The culture as a consequence is changing. The world is changing. And churches are facing change at an unprecedented scale. And if I'm honest with you this morning, Mike told you that we matriculated through Southwestern Christian College together. And after I left there, I went to sit under quite possibly one of the most underrated but powerful preachers in the brotherhood while I went to Liberty Baptist Theological Seminary. And after all of that training, I came to tell you today, they did didn't train me nor did they prepare me for this I, I learned in my seminary training but what, 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 I, what I learned in my seminary training did not prepare me to preach pastor lead or serve in a pandemic and I, I say that in a moment of crystal clear candor because I want you to know that we are living in a moment in history where if you have never trusted God before, you better learn how to trust God now. I think I feel my help coming. We are going to have to have some faith. I venture to suggest to you this morning that I'm not the only one in this room who, who, who made the investment to get the best education that they could to do the work that they desired to do. And you realize here in September 2020 that everything that you had learned to prepare you were left you unprepared at this moment in time. And at the same time, I, I'm trying to hold my peace, at the same time you have found out that although you are not prepared that God is prepared and since God is prepared I got a feeling that everything is going to be alright listen but family today I've come to tell somebody it's time after six months of heartache and headache after six months of frustration after six months of disappointment and despair after six months of not knowing when it's going to end after six months of sitting in the same house with your spouse whom you learned to live without and now you really got to learn to live with after six months of sending your children to school and now you got to sit in school with them after six months of dealing with hell and high water you we've got to come to a place where we make up in our minds that we have come this far by faith and if we're going to move past frustration we're going to have to learn to lean and depend on the Lord we got to move from frustration to faith right. say it again preacher so they can hear it all the way in the back it's time for us in this fire to move forward from frustration all the way to faith and then and only then when we move from frustration to faith we'll be able to move forward from this pandemic all right. All right. hear me when I tell you wear your mask <laughs> wash your hands yeah. practice social distancing and then put the, your whole life in the palm of the hands of the Lord in a season of uncertainty. Family, I want to give you something to hold on to. I forgot y'all was out there in those cars. Hey, hey, amen. If you can hear me, holler back at me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Listen, I, I, I want to give you something to hold on to in a season of uncertainty. I, I want to give you a promise this morning. Listen to me, family. A promise is a word that goes forth into unfulfilled time. I got to take my time right here. A promise is a word that reaches ahead of its speaker and its recipient to mark an appointment between them in the future. Did you hear what I just said? Uh, but but, but the, the value of a promise depends on the reliability and the trustworthiness of the person who made a promise. When Pookie made you a promise, you take that with a grain of salt. When Ray Ray say I promise, you roll your eyes. But when God makes a promise, the 
Bible says God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. Hear me family, God's promises are predicated on his providence. Ah, oh, y'all gonna make me preach. I said God's promises are predicated on his providence. Y'all not shouting because you don't understand providence. L listen, providence is the theological term. It is part and parcel of the promises of God. It's the idea that God has the ability to go before us and make a way for us in spite of everything that is ahead of us. See, you and I are confined by time and circumstance, but the God that we serve stands above time and circumstance and he moves ahead of us. We can't see him from where we are, but from wherever he is, he can see us. He does not just see us in time, he sees us ahead of time. And so that morning you were running late to get to work, it wasn't because your children couldn't find their shoes, it was because God said if they leave on time, that accident that they drove past, they would have driven into. Y'all don't hear me preaching this morning. It's God's providence that allows him to make a promise that he will perform. I, I, I feel my help coming that, that Abraham was a man whom God made a promise to. And when Abraham got on the end of his life, what he said that Paul reminds us of in Romans chapter 5, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I feel my help coming, Jeff, that, that God is able to perform whatever it is that he has promised. Listen, family, no, God is utterly independent and at the same time operates above time and circumstance. And he is therefore only capable of keeping every promise that he provides. That's good news for the child of God. I, I said that's good news for the child of God. Come on, y'all help me. If you know that's good news, y'all just nod your head. Y'all don't want to preach. L listen, listen, that's good news for the child of God who is looking for something or somebody Body that they can trust in these trying times. That's not a better picture in the Bible of the promises of God than in our text. Moses makes note of a man called Abraham. <laughs> and however, most of us met Abraham in Sunday school, but I, I want to suggest to you that the Abraham you met in Sunday school ain't the same Abraham that God met over there on the other side of the world in the era of the Chaldeans. As a matter of fact, that Abraham that you met in Sunday school wasn't even Abraham. He, he was introduced to God as Abram. He was not some pious Jew with a large family. No, when we meet Abraham, that was and even his name. He was a rough, simple, venerable, booting like sheep master, son of two heathens from the earth of the Chaldeans. He, he uttered no prophecy. He wrote no book. Abraham sang no songs. He gave no laws. Yet in the long list of Bible saints, he alone is spoken of as the father of the faithful and the friend of God. I don't know where who you are. I don't know where you come from. I don't know if you came from Fifth Ward or if you from Stop Six in Fort Worth, Texas, but whoever you are and wherever you have come from, Abraham is an attestation to the fact that God does not need you to be qualified to call you. He can call you from under the bridge. Amen, somebody. He can call you from Northwest Houston. He can call you from South Union. He can call you from Missouri City. He can call you all the way from Humble, Texas. Matter of fact, on my way down 35, I drove through Bryan, Texas. It doesn't matter where you are from, what you have or what you have not. When God wants you, he will call you. And when God calls you, he will qualify you. And when God qualifies you, he will use you. And if you allow the Lord to use you, then God will get the glory and you will get the blessing. I came today to ask you a couple questions. Will you give God glory? And do you want a blessing? One more time. Will you give God glory? And do you want a blessing? If you want to do both of those, go ahead and lift up your voice and give God a hand clap of praise. Because after all, 
all. That's what he's looking for in the first place. Family, I want to suggest to you that, that, that what set Abraham apart from everybody else, what positioned him to be called the father of the faithful, what postured him to be called a friend of God can be summed up in one word. Faith. Faith. Let me clear my throat. Faith. Faith is all I need. Listen, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. It, 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 hope is the anticipation of future fruition. Faith is the expectation that God will do just what he said. I, I ought not have to preach real hard or, or real loud right in through here because you here looking at me after six months of heartache and headache, after six months of, of problems and stress, after six months of a pandemic, we still here. You looking at me and I'm looking at you and I wonder do you have faith now? Do, do you believe now? Do you believe that God will do just what he said? Listen, I, I, I know because the Bible tells me so. That no matter what we are dealing with right now it will get better. Ah, come on church. I don't care if you got laid off from your job. If your husband's working your last nerve, if your children are driving you crazy, it will get better. It, when, the, when the waters come in high and the rain drops down from the sky, it will get better. When the winds of worry begin to blow and the storm clouds start to rise, trust me family, the sun will shine again. It will get better. How you know? Because the Bible tells me so. Listen, how do you know preacher? I know because Jeremiah tells me, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. In order though for you to see your future, you're going to have to have faith. If, hear me, if you remain frustrated in your now, you just might forfeit your future. I need to pause for the cause and say that one more time. If you allow this pandemic to so frustrate you in your now, you might forfeit your future. That's why I came today to give you a promise that whatever you see, just know God said he will provide. Listen, Abraham was not given the birthright or the blessing. He's not some dignitary from some aristocratic family, but he was a glorified sheep herder, the son of two heathen, who, who spent his time in the pasture instead of somebody's palace. His plight in life was not posh. He was not perfect, nor would he be considered a polished gentleman, but Abraham had faith. And that faith was based on a promise. Yeah. Family, watch this. I got two sticky statements that I want to give you, and then I'm going to head to lunch and then back up 35. Amen. In a pandemic, for my note takers, right. in a pandemic, remember, God gives promises, not plans. All right. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. In a pandemic, Remember, God gives promises yeah. and not plans. All right. All right. God promised yeah. Abraham when he was childless yeah. that he would be a father of many nations. Yeah. Listen to what God didn't give Abraham. All right. God didn't give Abraham a plan. Yeah. God gave Abraham a promise. Yeah. And too often, but Jeff, we want a plan. <laughs> Y'all acting like you don't hear me. This is what it looks like when you want to plan. God says, praise him in good times and in bad times. And, and, and before you open your mouth, you're looking for how God is going to give you something to praise him for. God says, tithe. God says, give. 
God says, make sure you lay by in store as I have prospered you. Yeah. And before you make up in your mind what you want to give, you're trying to figure out, can you afford it? I, 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 ain't, I ain't got no help in here. God didn't give Abraham a plan. He gave him a promise. Church, I've been living long enough, though, to know that God is not always a plan giver. But he is always a promise keeper. All right. All right. Yeah. Too often, we get consumed by a lack of a plan. We're not concerned enough about God's promise. One of these days, one of these days, we're going to have to grow some Abraham-like faith that allows us to sing that old spiritual. I don't know how, how he's going to do it. I don't know when, when he's going to fix it. But all I know is that yes, God will make a way for me somehow. No, notice in the text, in Genesis chapter 12, verse number 4, Abraham, the Bible says, so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. I, I, I like Abraham's nerve. Yeah. God made him a promise. Uh -huh. Here's the promise. Go to a land that I will show you. All right. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Because you can't show me the land until I get there. Right, right. But he said, Abraham, after God said, go, Abraham got up. Yeah. And he departed. Y'all missed it. Let me try it one more time. <laughs> God said, go to a land that I will show you. Yeah. Don't think Abraham wasn't just like me and you. Yeah. Abraham couldn't see all the way back to Fort Worth from Missouri City. That's right. That's right. But God said, go to a place yeah. that I'm going to show you. He didn't ask no questions. Yeah. He didn't grumble, gripe, and complain. Yeah. Abraham packed his bags, got up, yeah. and he departed. Yeah. Yeah. He had problems along the way. Uh -huh. But he held on to the promises of God. Yeah. Family, I am not here to lie to you. Yeah. Somebody told y'all a long time ago that if you just trust God that everything is going to be alright. I know it sounds good. I know it feels good when we sing the song. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, yeah. I've had more problems since I came into the body of Christ yeah. than I had before I came into the body of Christ. Yeah. But what the difference is, is that before I came into the body of Christ, I did not have God on my side. Yeah. So when troubles came, I had to handle them on my own. But since I came into the body of Christ, I had God on my side. And so when the enemy came in like a flood, it wasn't that it didn't rain, but God raised up a standing. I, I wish I had somebody in this, under this tent. I was about to say in this room, but I wish I had somebody under this tent that knows that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Is there anybody in here today that knows that, that, that nothing can stand against you when you are standing with God? When you know that God is on your side, it doesn't matter what the enemy has to do or say to you, it won't work. Listen, Abraham was lied on, talked about, mistreated. Abraham was used, abused, and he was scorned. But he held on to the promises of God. Listen. That reminds me of this old song we used to sing when there were pews. That weren't padded. Wasn't no AC in that little building in that church that I grew up in. We put the windows up. Put fans in them. We didn't have no central heat or air. We had kerosene heaters. Yeah, I'm telling my age now. Mike don't know nothing about that. Amen. <laughs> Trust in him, though, yeah. is the song that we used to sing. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who will not leave you, whatsoever years may bring. Yeah. If my earthly friend forsaken, just keep on holding on. Yes, I remember that old deacon used to say, time yes, is filled with swift transition. Yeah. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and a hold on to God's unchanging hand. And I like the way the deacon would sing it. Jeff, he would say, are you holding? And the church would say, yes, we're holding. Uh, Missouri City, are you holding? Yes, are you holding? Yes, but hold 
hold on to God's unchanging hand. And then he would get to that next verse, still more closely to him cling. But my favorite verse was that last stanza of the song. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright to him in glory, your enraptured soul will view. And then church, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you holding? Yeah, Yeah, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Family, remember, in a pandemic, number one, remember God gives promises, Uh not plans. Number two, and I'm done. In a pandemic, God often proves you before he prospers you. Mm. Amen. Y'all don't mind if I go on about three and a half minutes of overtime, do you? In a pandemic, God proves you before he prospers you. There's a difference between having faith and being faithful. Did y'all hear me? Anybody can have faith, but not everybody is going to be faithful. Listen, but it, it takes a certain kind of individual to be faithful. Faith is a mental ascent toward God. Faithful is that ascent in action. Are you willing and are you ready to be faithful? Listen, after God makes a promise, sometimes he will have to prune you. After God makes a promise, every time he will provide for you. After God makes a promise, all the time you should praise him. Why? Because when God makes a promise, God is able to perform that which he has promised. So family, I can see Abraham marching his son Isaac up the rough side of that mountain. Yeah. Can you see him? Yeah. Yeah. And all Abraham is saying, I know my God will provide. He's got the donkey. He's got a few men. Yeah. He's got a few sticks of wood to build the altar. Uh-huh. He's got Abraham and probably a sack lunch. Yeah. And they make their way up the rough side of the mountain. Yes, Can you see them? Yeah. They get about halfway up. And Abraham says to the men, Abraham says, Isaac and I will take it from here. Yeah. So they leave them about halfway and they go a little bit higher. Uh-huh. They get to the place where Abraham was going to make and raise the altar. Yeah. Abraham gets busy, stacks one piece of wood on the other piece of wood. Yeah. Can't you see Isaac with a confused look on his face? Oh, yeah. uh, daddy. Yeah. You know how they do, don't you? Yeah. Uh, if I hear one more uh, daddy yeah. in this pandemic, I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, uh, daddy, yeah. I see the wood. Yeah. I'm glad you brought the donkey to help us carry it. Uh, uh, I see the altar. Yeah. But daddy, I thought you said we came up here to worship. Uh-huh. <laughs> Can I pause right here and parenthetically insert that sometimes that's how we do our own children. We we bring them to worship without nothing to put on the altar. Uh, anyway, uh, Abraham looked at his son and said, son, don't worry about it. God will provide. He gets the, the timber in order. He begins to strike his match, if you will. He lights the fire on the altar and he looks at his son with tears in his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Some scholars said that by this point, Isaac was not a little boy, but he was big enough to fight back. So Abraham, I got an 11 year old son and uh, we had to take him yesterday to get a pair of shoes. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, the boy wore a size nine. Uh, we walked in the ditch yesterday. He was complaining because his shoes didn't fit. I said, well, before I get on the road, let's go get you some shoes, son. He said, uh, Daddy, I don't think I can wear a nine no more. I said, oh, it's okay, son. Um, let's get your size down. The boy is 11 years old. And now he wears a size 11 and a half. Oh, Y'all pray for me. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is, if my son, at 11 years old, wear a size 11 and a half, uh-huh. he ain't big enough to whoop me. Yeah. Uh, 
but I know if I'm going to sacrifice, it ain't going to happen without a fight. Amen, somebody. It ain't going to happen without a struggle. So can you imagine Abraham in his old age trying to wrestle a 13, 14, 15 year old boy up on a sacrifice with tears in his eyes as he raises the knife up to take his son of promise. He hears a voice from heaven that said, hold up. Wait a minute. Don't touch him because God made a promise. Man. And Abraham said, here am I, Lord. Yeah. That's sometimes our problem. We hear and listen for every voice other than the one that matters. Yeah. And we wonder why our situation didn't work out. It wasn't that God didn't provide. It's that when he called your name, you act like you didn't hear his voice. And listen, family, when you find yourself in a tight spot, in a panic-producing pandemic, be careful that you recognize the voice from heaven. In 2020, in September, you got to understand that there are a whole lot of talking heads. There are a whole lot of voices whispering in your ear, but you better learn how to hear from heaven. Am I talking to anybody? Who knows that if I can just hear a word from the Lord, it'll turn my life around. If I if I can get a word from heaven, it'll fix my problems. It'll solve my issues. If I can get a word from heaven, it'll turn my midnight into morning. If I can get a word from heaven, it'll turn my sorrow into joy. Hear me, family. If you don't hear the voice that sounds from heaven at your lowest moment, then just maybe you will be the cause that God wasn't able to perform what he promised. Abraham heard the voice. He looked around and he saw that God had provided. But he didn't stop and just celebrate. But he took from what God had provided yeah. and he trusted God enough to make a sacrifice anyhow. Mm. Listen, family. God will provide. Yeah. But I want to tell you so, though. God's promises are often conditional. Y'all know we like to believe that we can do whatever we want to do. And God is still going to do his part. But listen, no, that's not how God works. Church is over. See how quiet it's getting. God will provide. But you've got to have the faith that it takes to walk by the way he talks. The psalmist said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Sometimes you will only have enough light to take the next step. But if you trust him, the Bible says that his word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. If you trust him, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your crooked ways straight. Uh, listen, I know that, that God has made some promises. He is able to perform because he is a promise keeper. Yes, sir. Lord, if you're listening, yeah. you promised that if I trusted you, you would make my crooked way straight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, if you're listening, you promised that if I kept my mind on you, you would keep me in perfect peace. Yeah. Lord, you promised that if I worshipped you, that you would watch over me. Lord, you promised that if I prayed, that you would answer my prayers. Lord, you promised that if I sent praises up, that you would send blessings down. Y'all not going to help me close this sermon. Lord, you promised that if I humbled myself, that you would lift me up. Lord, you promised that if I gave as you have prospered me, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that I didn't even have room enough to see receive. Lord, 
You promised that if I was faithful unto death, you would give me a crown of righteousness. Lord, you promised that if I prayed or if I grieved, that you would comfort me. You promised that if I was in trouble, that you would keep me from falling. You promised that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Lord, you promised that when the enemy came in like a flood, you would raise up a standard. Lord, you promised to be a present help in the time of trouble. You promised that you would heal my broken heart, that you would forgive me, that you would deliver me, that you would rescue me. And I came today to tell somebody, he didn't just make me those promises, but he made you those promises. And if you know God is a promise keeper, go ahead and put your hands together and give God a hand clap of praise because he is a promise maker and he is a promise keeper. Family, when if I haven't learned anything else over the last six months of this pandemic, what I have learned is that God is able to perform that which he has promised. But hear me, family. Many, if not most, of his promises are predicated on our performance. Listen, he didn't say live any old kind of way and I give you a victorious crown of life. He, he said be faithful unto death and I'll give you a crown of life. We, we've got to get back in the church to tell the folks they got to live right. Did y'all hear what I just said? Why is it quiet in the church now? We got to get back to a place where you got to tell folks, you can't just talk to me any kind of way. You can't cry out to the Lord in the in the sanctuary and cuss me out in the parking lot. It, no, 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 no. God's promises are predicated on your performance. And, but, but, but knowing that, though, isn't it good to know that although his promises are predicated on your performance, you do not have to be perfect. Let me let me let me let y'all take some of this pressure off. You ain't gotta be perfect for God to perform his promises. But you gotta promise that you'll be faithful. And and listen, family, and I'm getting ready to take my seat for the third time. Uh, this sermon was done about seven minutes ago, but I'm getting ready to take my seat. God wants you to be faithful. And I believe that when the children of God are faithful, it'll change everything. Not just for us, but for the world. Why, preacher? Because my Bible tells me that when my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Uh, don't stop and put a period where God puts a come. But turn from their wicked way. The old preacher will say, repent. Well, we heard that term in the church in a long time. Repent. That's what the chronicler wrote when he said, turn from their ways. Repent. Chain. Stop some of it that you ain't supposed to be doing. Start back doing what you're supposed to be doing. When my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their, heal their land. Family, do you want the land to be healed? Do you want the land to be healed? I'm tired of us having to be so creative, having to put up tents, having to have YouTube accounts and all this, that and the other. I want to get back to the way God designed for us to come together. But we got to be willing to do our part to push this world through the pandemic. Somebody's here. You need to know that Jesus loved you so much that he left heaven just to get you there. I want to ask you the question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God? If you believe that he is, I ain't gonna waste a whole lot of time and a whole lot of sinner folks that come out to church in a pandemic. But uh, in case you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, let me tell you about a man who loved you. Yeah. 
So much that he left heaven's shore. Yeah. Lived perfectly before men, yet he was persecuted, prosecuted, and crucified. Yeah. They hung our Lord on an old rugged cross. Oh. He died, but he didn't stay dead. Yeah. He got up from the grave with all power in his hand. Yeah. He went literally to hell and back just to get you to heaven. On, Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> I feel that storm blowing in. Yeah. Believe that with all of your heart. Make a decision to change your life. Confess Jesus to be the Christ. And in the middle of a pandemic, I believe we're still baptizing you for the mission of your sins. If you're here, you need prayer. We want to give your life to Christ or dedicate your life to Christ. Why don't you come as we together stand and sing? Time is filled with swift transition. Now on earth, on who can stay? Come on, y'all. Build your hopes on things eternal. When they hear a whole to God, it's a change in the hands. Everybody but a whole to get ahead. Come on to my God, it's a change in the Come on, y'all. Hold to his hand. To God's a change in the And you can be. Your hopes on things eternal. Oh, when your hope to God's unchanging hand. Right here we say, when your journey is completed, well, if to God you have been true, come fair and right the home. Everybody better hold, hold on to my God's unchanging up And you can be your hopes on things eternal And your hopes to God's unchanging Let the church say amen. amen And we ask everybody watching in Facebook land if you would enjoyed this message, you, you would give us a virtual amen. We are thankful to Brother Moss for coming our way. Yes, sir. Uh, you did us a good job, and uh, I was definitely taking notes on uh, some of the points that you made, but I just had one thing to say because of time, uh, that God is the promise keeper. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Brother Moss, for blessing us with a word today. We have several who have uh, requested prayer. We will... Uh, Read their uh, prayer requests until you're hearing, and then we will lift them up. Uh, Sister Sharon Jenkins asked prayers for Jerry Williams and family on the loss of his brother Emmett. And she's also asking prayers for her uncle, Willie Young, on the loss of his son, Willie Young Jr. Uh, our condolences and prayers go out to the Ashley Bruins family on the passing of uh, Sister Patricia Ashley. Please keep that family in prayer. And Sister Leslie Waddy uh, asked prayers for herself as well. So at this time we ask, uh, well, we have one more coming. And Brother John Isaac Reed asked for prayers. And he's uh, praying that I continue to be a better father to my children, a better husband to my wife, and a better man. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Father and our God, we come, dear Father, we thank you. Father, for being who you are, for being the provider, Father, for being the promise keeper. Father, we thank you for the word that we heard today, and Father, we just ask that you would uh, be with Brother Moss, uh, continue to be with him in his ministry, help him to safely make it home, and Father, we ask that you just continue to uh, give him the word that he can continue to preach. Uh, we lift up in prayer all those who had visa prayer requests for Sister Jenkins, uh, lifting up her um, uncle on the, uh, the loss that the, that family suffered. We uh, also lift up the Ashley Bruins families on the loss that they have suffered. And we uh, uh, lift up our sister Leslie Waddy, Father, for uh, uh, everything that she stands in need of. Uh, Father, we thank you for the success of our meetings this whole month. Father, just to continue to be with us. Father, we thank you and we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Let's say amen again. Amen. Well, that's the most city singers are going to come to the front. And uh, we thank Brother Moss for an awesome job this morning. Amen. 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 Let's give him a round of applause for a job well done. Amen. He blessed us with a word. And I would have more to say, but we know this storm is coming. And uh, we want to allow the Mo City Singers to uh, get up and sing a few songs so we can get out of here. Uh, but just uh, two reminders, and then we're going to close. Uh, Saturday, October 3rd, from 10 to 1 p.m., uh, we will have our voters registration drive again. And then also a community swap meet. Uh, clean out your closets and bring uh, gently used clothing and household items to swap or to give away. That will be October 3rd from 10 till 1 p.m. So uh, if you have any clothes or things that you want to swap out, please bring them. Then lastly, uh, we congratulate Brother Malcolm and Kanita Robbins on the birth of their son, uh, Dante Alexander, yesterday. And uh, they had a successful birth, and we congratulate them on that. At this time, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to invite the most city singers to come forth and give us some songs. This time... Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father God in heaven, we come with our head bowed and our heart lifted up to thee. Thank you, kind master, for what our ears have heard and our eyes have seen. Thank you for the word that we've heard, Lord. We trust over pray that we can take this word and embed them in our hearts, Lord, and go out into the sin cursed world and tell someone about Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We love you for you loved us first. Go with us now and we uh, leave this place, but never thy sight. Continue to guide us and protect us. In Jesus' name, we do. We pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 